I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through, three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. So I, I opted to not get the new Paper Mario game, even though I wanted okay. to. Because it, it was still $60. It's a game I forgot about, didn't buy for a while because I wanted the price to go down and it didn't. Octopath Traveler. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Oxpath Traveler looks fun. It's a um, really good game. It's like traditional uh, RPG, like Final Fantasy style, right? Yeah, it's like a JRPG. Yeah. But the idea is like there's eight different characters with eight different storylines all throughout mm -hmm. the world. And you just pick one to start with. And really, yeah. that's the one storyline that you kind of run through. But then to build your team. You have to go through the first, like, you go into a different town, and that's where character X is. is, And then, if you want them to join your team, you have to play through the first chapter of their story, and then mm -hmm. they're on your team. Or if you want, oh, you can cool. opt to pivot and choose if you like their, their storyline more. So there's, like, eight different stories within this game. Hence, Octopath. Yeah, I got eight it. Paths. I get it now. It makes sense. Yep. Yep. No, it's fun. I've been I've been thinking about getting that for a while, but the sixty dollars price tag has always kind of scared me away from it. That is because um, of how it looks, because it looks like a two D Game Boy JRPG, but it's a two and a half D, which ends up looking pretty cool. Um, yeah, GRP, JRPG that's really eight separate storylines. So that's why after I found that out, I was like, oh, okay, that the, the uh, money's so it's worth like less it than now. ten bucks a storyline. Yeah. Okay. For, I mean that one that's... is like I'm ten hours in almost now, and I I. Haven't gotten to chapter or finished chapter two of the primary storyline that I'm I'm working through. Okay, so that's that's okay. You, you get your hours, you get your get you get your money's worth out of that. Another of that game point. that's re the the other game, another game that I think that's like kind of JRPG but kind of Minecrafty is Dragon Quest Builders. I've played. That's a fun one. That's a really fun one. Um, yeah, that's another one of those games that you get your money's worth. Although Dragon Quest Builders two is far superior than Dragon Quest Builders. There. They're both good. I don't know how many hours I've got on it. Like I've I, got like 70-something hours. Okay, I might have gotten... Easily. I forget. Maybe 15, 20, and then just for some reason I got distracted and then had yeah, to jump yeah. back to it. Well, it, it's one of those types of games where if you get out of the story and like it's... Because it's a Minecraft-type game. If you stop playing for a little bit, you're just like, what was I doing? That's the other thing I like about Octopath Traveler. For each character, there's a journal, and it basically tells you what you're supposed to be doing. So you can set it down for a while, come back, and be like, oh, okay. Like, yeah, there's I, a world that's... map. It, like, the journal is basically like, here's my name. Here's what I'm supposed to do. Here it is. If you want to find that shit, go to the world map, and you're back on your track. Yeah. The... I... I... <laughs> that's the problem I have with, like, every Fallout and... Uh... Oh, yeah. Elder Scrolls game. Is I'll I, I've never beaten Skyrim. That's just a fact. I have yet to beat Skyrim, and mostly that's because the world around the main story is more interesting. So I spend oh, way 100%. more time in the world around the main story. Um, but any time that I make headway on the story, I stop playing for a while, and then I'm like, I don't remember any of this. Yeah, that's fair. The uh... um. The, the thing with Skyrim, <clears throat> which I have beaten, but how I play is I do all the world stuff until I see a quest or there's something I want to do. And it's like, oh, I can't do this until I get a little bit farther into the main story. And then I do the main story up until I can do the thing I want to do. Then it's scoop and go back to, like, you know, doing whatever and filling a house with potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> the The problem for me is I like to sequence break in those yeah. types of games. Like, I like to just ignore the story. Like, I think I got to the throat of the world before they en enabled it. So I was just oh, up there, and yeah. I had I had unlocked it, and, you know, nothing was there. And it was just so much more fun for me that way. Because, like, 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 as you, Brandon, personally may know, I, uh, well, famously to you, 
I still have yet to go to Diamond City. Yeah. In Fallout 5. <laughs> which I don't... You haven't gone to Diamond C- I don't... I have... I just Brandon. don't. There's, there's certain... Like, I get distracted Brandon. easily and find the world more interesting than the main story path, just like you. But for some reason, you get, like, way deeper down that rabbit hole. And I don't oh, no, know no. how. Brandon, I have explored everywhere around Diamond City. Because here's the thing. At first, I was avoiding the story because I wanted to draw the game out. And then I told you about that, and you got upset. And then it became a Diamond City's a no-go zone for John. Which, there's so much cool, like, (laughs) there's cool other stuff. You don't have to do the story in Diamond City. You can go into Diamond City and do it. Like, there's this baseball thing. Like, there's all. Nope, 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 nope. Nope, I'm you never can going go to the in green and machine. still avoid the main storyline. But you I'm can... never going into it. Ugh. I will never ever go into Diamond City. There's, th- there's the. Uh... I know, I know, I know uh... that. Here's the thing. I know that there's a lot of cool shit in there. I know there's really cool characters in there. I know there's a cool robot detective character, which is a spoiler. Yeah. F- but but then they I know... can also be your follower, and then I can't have them as because something happened in the game where they just don't exist anymore. Yeah. I've so, got a couple followers who, I have two specifically. It's been a, a, a long time. There's well, yeah, the game's like uh, how old now? I don't even know. But there's a it's lady and there's a robot, and I can't ever get yeah. them back because something happened, and like they've just unloaded from the game. Mm-hmm. They just don't exist. It, I think it's about five years old because I remember because I bought it uh, from Best Buy, and I because I wanted to get the little map that had all the perks on it, like the little uh, yeah, the little like like uh, poster. Yeah, and then I I, lost... I I activated it on Steam and then threw out the the CD because yeah, <laughs> because just because fair yeah there I got the deluxe edition of um Oblivion when it came out that had the full map and the extra book and the coin and the coin. I yeah. don't know where that coin is. I lost it's the good. coin, and I'm still upset about it because I have a little stack of challenge coins, and it would be perfect. Yeah, it would be perfect. Yeah, it was um uh, a gold coin from Tamriel. Yeah, yeah, it was really cool. I knew nothing about the Elder Scrolls, and I asked for that for like a Christmas or birthday present. Yeah, and of course I loved Oblivion because uh when that game came out, it was like it was a first of its kind. Yeah, most, I watched the entire documentary about Oblivion, and it was fantastic. Because the whole like after I finished the game, then I watched the documentary, and I was like, "This game was so much better than I thought it was." And I already thought it was great. Here's a controversial opinion: I like Oblivion better than Skyrim in terms of the RPG elements. I prefer Oblivion to Skyrim, and then here's asterisk: I haven't played Oblivion in a while. Fair. Uh, the so, the reason I liked Oblivion a lot was because doing things raised your skill levels. Exactly. That, that's, that's that's honestly that's my favorite thing. I about wish they Oblivion. had the mechanic because even though it's probably like monotonous and and this is probably something that is now a difference generationally between di- mm. like uh, play style is that I kind of miss crouching and jumping for no reason to everywhere I go just to watch that little bar go up. I know there was a there was like a weird satisfaction in that. Yeah, um, like it's one I, thing I, I to also... be normal in Skyrim, but I miss being creepy because I'd play Oblivion and just sneak yeah. everywhere, and in my head I'd like you know I'd be because I don't want them to be creeped out by me, so I had to be like really stealthy, and nobody could know I was going, even if I'm just trying to go like buy more potions. Well, yeah, it's like it's there's there's like a a role play element that's lost. Yeah, I exactly. think I think I think that's that's. That's the one, like, Skyrim, I think, mechanically speaking, is a better game. But I think Oblivion is a better game in terms of role-playing. Yes. And that's, that's, that that, that, that tickles two separate uh, ludological buttons for me. Um, and... Uh, I don't know. There's just something special about like your stealth has increased, ticking off, and you're like, "Wait, what?" Yeah, <laughs> because you didn't know that there was an enemy nearby. Oh yeah, yeah. And and that's the those moments are very fun and memorable. Um, and you don't get that as much in Skyrim because they don't have that system. No, that, and I also like there was something so there was something 
I preferred the Gray Fox and the Dark Brotherhood quest line in mm. Oblivion than the Thieves Guild and um, Dark Brotherhood in Skyrim for some reason. Um, yeah. And I well, think there's that, also like the, the Gray Fox, like that they lacked a mysterious figure sort of in Skyrim. And I loved the mysterious figure of, of the Gray Fox and the Dark Brotherhood. Um, I just like Cicero because he's a he's he's too kinky. Fair. The my favorite thing about the um the Thieves Guild quest line was the boots of Spring Hill Jack. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. Man, high school. I, I, I th- th- this is this is like kind of pushing me back because like we talked about this game back in high school. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, this is it. This is throwing back memory. Like it was a hot summer. My mom was, uh, she's conscious of uh, electricity uh, consumption. So the mm-hmm. bottom of the house is always much cooler than the top of the house. Um, yeah. Because we weren't really running air that much. Uh, so just like being in the basement, just playing that game on a hot summer day, just like on an air mattress in the middle of the floor. I feel I feel like um, maybe not, a, oh, wait, Oblivion was 360, wasn't it? Yes, Oblivion yes. was 360. So so we might have actually it might have actually been one of those those times that we just like kind of traded off controllers playing the game. Oh, maybe. Cuz there was a lot of times that we traded off like in your basement and my basement. There would just yeah. be a group of people trading off controllers playing different games. Like remember the time I played Fable? Oh, so I much. love Fable. I miss uh, I, I wish they would remaster the original Fable. Uh, man, dude, I I I've been wanting to play Fable for a while, and I don't remember if it was you or another friend who brought it over, but I remember playing it one night, and I was perfect Paragon, perfect, like, good, good, yeah. good. And then, uh, because in high school you do this stupid thing where you stay up all night, um, I, uh, at, at like, 4 a.m. in the morning, I was getting loopy, and I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to murder all the Heroes Guild. <laughs> so I went from full Who good hasn't? to full, full evil. evil. Yeah. I never played the game since because I didn't own it. I loved that. That, that Fable 1 is probably my favorite Fable game. And then 2 was really good. And 3 was fine. Um, and then, like, 3 was you could tell they're they're starting to milk the um, the the IP. And then after that, they did a bunch of Fable stuff where it was all garbage. And everyone knew it was garbage, and they were just IP milking. But Fable is great because I love that kind of game, and I played each of the well, one, two, and three, four times because I always played uh, hard, good, hard, evil, true, neutral, and then one. Like if I do what I feel I would do myself in that situation, just to find out how I am as a human. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's Peter Molyneux. Yeah, that's, that's really all I can say is he's he's a he's a developer. He's a producer who has interesting ideas. Over promises and sometimes delivers something fun. Yeah, that's that's fair. Sometimes is key here. Yeah, because <laughs> like, like, he delivered on Fable for sure. Fable was fun. Fable 2, I remember being fun. After that, less fun. Um. Spore was overpromised. Yep. But I still but here's the thing, it was I fun. still loved it. Was I still, still a fun loved game. Spore up until you get to up until you get to like the galactic stage. Once you hit the galactic stage, the game falls apart. I don't know if I ever got like, that far. Because it's like it starts out as like a like one of those fish eating games where you eat bigger, bigger things. Yeah. Then it becomes a like survival sim where you're trying to breed your your species to become more powerful. It's like breed then and evolve, becomes, and you've got to try to like yeah. gain traits that'll help you do yeah. these other things. Yeah. Then there's the like um, the city state phase where it's like almost like civilization, um, and then once you finally figure out how to leave the planet, it's like world domination shit, and you're trying to capture the center of the universe or something or the galaxy or something like that. Once you hit that point, the game just falls to pieces. Yeah. But everything up leading up to that's fun. It's just, it sucks because it's like, not, like, most of the game is supposed to be the galactic stage. Yeah. And it's not fun. 
at all. Yeah. It was still fun. I liked the 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 creature creation and yeah, that the whole like earlier stages of the game was the fun part. Well, the the problem with the creature creator though is the TTP was way too low. Yeah. Way too low. <laughs> uh, okay. So um at this point should we, yeah, uh, uh, we, I think we're good. Well, yeah, we're, we're we're good. We'll we'll introduce. I'll say, uh, welcome to Cryptopedia, an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Each week, we will take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling the tales of monsters, the paranormal, folklore, and that thing that definitely lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. I'm John. And this week's creature lives in the Philippines. It's humanoid Ooh. in nature. I couldn't find okay. a date regarding the origin or first sighting of the creature, and it is still seen today. It's humanoid, you said? It's humanoid, and it's in the Philippines. So there, there's those two things tend to have a trend. Yeah. It, so for some reason, I'm thinking Hungry Ghost, but I don't know if that's good. It is not. Uh, It's corporeal. Okay. Well, Well, sometimes they're like, quasi corporeal Phil- the Filipino ghost stories are a different kind of breed than American ones yeah they're kind of fucked up a little bit yeah. <laughs> um, a little bit There's, I will I've... say I've omitted some information from not the introduction but of like some of the lore behind this creature because I was like oh that might be a little bit much <laughs> that's probably for the best yeah <laughs> Because knowing knowing the way that Filipino ghost stories go, there's there's a lot of triggery warning stuff in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, I have no idea what it's it, going to be. The bulk of it wasn't that, but there was a there's a couple like little things where I was like, oh, I think, I think I'm just gonna drop that. Like, if someone's interested, they could go through the sources and find that information out on we, their own. We 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 can leave that bit out. We yeah. don't we don't need to add a tr- we don't need to add something that would require us to put a trigger warning at the beginning of the episode. Yeah. Uh, so today we're talking about the Tambaloslavs. Okay, there is literally no way I would have gotten that yeah. whatsoever. Yeah, because I can't even pronounce that. I accidentally found it, so I started, and I'll, I'm going to share the copy a little bit Whoa. after we get deeper in. But I started trying to do some. Um, Japanese stuff, um, mm-hmm. kind of in the vein of what you. It, it was inspired by some stuff I thought about in last the the last episode. Okay, but it's having a hard time finding information, and I stumbled upon this, and I was like, "This is actually kind of a perfect follow up." Um, okay, um, I just want to point out, you might have heard this on the audio, listeners. I don't know if you heard it, Brandon. Uh, Google, my 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 smartphone uh, picked up my voice, and it it transliterated literally no way i could have gotten that whatsoever because i can't even pronounce that and it's cuz <laughs> c-u-z <laughs> i got actually scared by it because i was not like expecting to hear some a voice in my room that's fair <laughs> that's so, very yeah. fair okay yeah i can't pronounce this thing so i'm gonna call it the taz the tanny what is it tan t- t- you'll see the spell it's t-a okay m-b-a-l-o-s-l-o-s all right i'm gonna call it tammy all right, Tammy. The spooky Tammy. Tammy. Um, spooky Tammy. So there are a few uh, regional variations of this creature. Creature, because of course there are. But in general, it's a humanoid with some exaggerated physical features, and it tends to be a prankster in nature. And uh, by prankster, I mean he will cause you to walk in circles uh, until you either die or he consumes you. Hmm. I don't think that that's a prankster behavior, personally. It's a trick. Ha ha! I eat. Ha ha! Ha ha! I killed you. <laughs> See the trick? <laughs> Tricks on you. You're dead. Ha ha! <laughs> um. So something that I found rather interesting about this creature is that there's no formal documentation on this creature whatsoever. Yet there is a parade in which it is prominently featured, um, which is during the uh Daragang uh. Magion Festival, which is a festival to honor, um, uh, like the bounty of the area and like a good harvest, um, mm-hmm. and all that. There's a parade of um uh, Saint Gigantes, uh, that features large paper figurines that people make and and display in the parade. Um, and mm-hmm. the regional difference, uh, differences along with the artists in the parade resulted in some genuine, genuinely interesting back and forth, um. 
Uh, and then first, before you go farther, I want to say this is a direct result of your uh, episode on the uh, Tanuki. Yeah, so let me go ahead and share this. Okay. And I will move it to... This is the fun part where people get to he- listen to me browse file file structure. And mm-hmm. there we go. Boop! It's in the folder. It is the Temple right, of Lust. All right. I see Tambi. All right. We are we are now on the top of sheet two. All right. I got to enable pop-ups because for whatever reason. Weird. Yeah, Google Drive's weird. Okay. Let's see. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, Can you see I how now this see is why now inspired this... by the last episode? Ha <laughs> Yeah. This is Except... your fault. <laughs> all right you want me to please describe the creature okay. yeah. all right um so brandon wasn't lying when he said uh exaggerated features because the <laughs> mouth is huge that is a yep that is true the eyes are also huge the fingers are super long yep. it's got big ears and a huge cock <laughs> <laughs> oh yes um, so the penis and balls are gigantic. It looks like um, it's riding its own penis. <laughs> it's a mode of transportation. Well, this, the, it also, the, this particular penis doesn't look like it's fully erect yet. No. Because it's got a little bit of a, a down. Droop. Yeah. So I'm going to assume if this creature gets a full erection, it just shrivels into the penis. <laughs> <laughs> because there's no blood left in that no. body. <laughs> Uh, it also has a very large tongue as well. Yep, yep. Long tongue. Um, I will say that this thing will destroy anyone. Yeah, yeah. See, the what about this doesn't say prankster? Yeah, I, I also am seeing... I'm, I'm able to make some connections now about what you might have left out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are correct. All right, cool. Um... Since there's no formal documentation on the being, uh, debates were fueled with accusations that the Tambiolosus giant erect penis uh, was being displayed with a non-cultural, like, with no cultural basis. Um, In others... So, like, like it's just, like, a big old dong? Yeah, so they were thinking... There were some accusations that, artistically, the penis is not associated with the folklore or the lore behind the creature. And we'll get into these uh, regional differences because regionally that's a thing. Just not in the area where this particular parade is. But mm-hmm. if this artist, whatever came to the parade, cause I know about this creature, it makes sense why they would put a huge cock right on this. Thing. I Listen now, I know that it might be a little bit uh, grotesque to say that, but I don't think that there's a better way of saying it. There it is. I mean, it is a huge like the, like the, that is the correct word. The huevos, the huevos touch the ground, and and its current like half mastedness, it is at shoulder height. Yeah, it's horrifying. Yes, it's legitimately scary. It's a demon like, with a huge penis. Like. Yeah, it's. I can't overstate how upsetting it is to look at this image. Oh, and there are many of them. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, others continued that the artists were mistaken and that the Tambaluslos only presented a giant smile. Another commented that this is being taken out of context. The quote unquote creature is Tambaluslos, a mythological being. Uh, prominent in Bickle lore, it is the star of the Gigantes Parade and is um, understandable due to the artist's rendition of its oversized phallus, uh, which is where this misunderstanding begins. The Tambulusilus has an oversized scrotum rather than a gigantic penis that we see in the parade. So you can already see that there, some people are saying it's just the smile is big. Someone's saying, no, it's not the penis, it's just the scrotum that is large. And then someone else is saying, well, really, it's it's the phallus that's that's the large part so well really there's nothing attached to the penis at this point it's like like, it's just a giant penis that wanders the woods yeah it's like that genital jousting game 
What? Joust? Those they were in ostriches. Joust? No. On joust? Have you, you never seen genital jousting? N- uh, I think I have to take a Google break. Gen- yeah, yeah. Genital jousting. Genital. Well, herpes is the first thing that comes up. All right, we put um, in genital. It's a game jousting. Oh, that's. So Sup- it's a game about uh toxic ma- toxic masculinity. It's surprisingly not not safe for work. I the videos I, I see just so f- they, it's just pictures of fruit. Oh, but they're oh nope. that looks fun. There's there's fruit in the shape well, of a penis trying to cross well, the road. That's fun. Well, Brandon, that's because you are looking at the uh, edited version. That's that's the safe for work version. Of another image. Yeah. Oh, I like that. How do I? Yeah, it's very positive Steam reviews. Oh, it's it's a from uh, I've I've watched people play. I never played it myself. It's a phenomenal <laughs> game. <laughs> that banana has a foreskin. <laughs> oh wow. Oh. Ooh. Yes. Ooh. Octopath Traveler might have to take a break. I mean, it's not going to have... It doesn't have the level of depth of Octopath Traveler. It's It's got some girth to it, though. Oh, it definitely has some girth. It's girthy. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh, all right. So so now we're going to... We're going to flip on over to some of these regional differences. Also, there's buttholes on all of the... I noticed characters. that. There, yeah. The penises have b-holes. It's pretty yes. great. Yeah. And there's there's there's... So here's the thing about that game. They're not yeah. all males. There's female penises. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Huh. Oh, yeah. I see some broken glass. I don't... That penis is wearing a a, a, a collared shirt and tie. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. This is going to... This is based... We're going to have to put, like, some kind of disclaimer in this the episode description that this is just a bunch of penis talk. Yeah. Very... <laughs> yeah. Oh... <laughs> I love how you're just like dumbfounded because you've now learned that this is a thing. Hey, um, so S- Speedy II uh, gave this game a ten out of ten, thumbs up on Steam. He played it for two hours and he commented, "PP going to poo poo." PP do go into poo poo sometimes. Yes. Hebu Man uh, also uh, played for three point two hours. Better story than Last of Us Two. <sighs> Well, that's. I don't want to give uh, volume to that because the reason that they said that is because there's like. <sighs> is there a way to to filter so, comments by hours played? I don't know, but that that whole thing is a huge like drama. What's a huge? I don't drama? want to spoil like the whole Last of Us Two thing because never... the game is actually really well received. It's just. Um, the 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 whatchamacallit um gamer gators sect of uh, game people uh yeah. have some problems with it because it has <sighs> all right so here's something that is not spoilery for last of us 2 but it is spoilery for last of us dlc ellie the main character of the last of us 2 is gay yeah. oh okay so extrapolate from that what you will oh, um, about, about where, oh, why gotcha. people don't like it. Oh. Yeah. Those people seem creepy. Um, yeah. Oh, also, here's the thing. She was like a 14-year-old girl in the first game. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so Big Ham played, this is the longest I could see, 7.5 hours on record. That's a lot of genital jousting. That's a lot of genital jousting. He said the story was very emotionally heartbreaking. I cried many times while playing it. What kind of crying, though? <laughs> the, the, like, pee-pee cry. Oh, I see. The pee-pee does go in the poo-poo. It do. I'm looking at some of the screenshots. Okay. Um, in the region of Cebu, uh, the Tambalaslas has a large head and a grin. Um, its mouth is so large that it takes up basically its entire face and looks sort of like Chatter, the Cenobite from Hellraiser, with all the teeth. 
Um, oh, God. And it also has a maniacal laugh. This version of the monster will make people walking through the forest become lost and walk in circles. Um, the more lost its victims become, the harder this creature laughs. But fortunately, there is a way to break the curse of this creature. Um, and that is if you turn all of your clothes inside out, it will laugh so hard that its upper lip wraps over its its eyes, uh, causing it to, to not be able to see so you can you can effectively escape this creature. You know, that happens to me all the time. Yeah, that does does that. <laughs> it happens a lot. Um, it's a big problem, actually. It is a fairly serious issue. Oh, no, no. Don't get me wrong. If your lip covers your eyes... You might need some surgery. There's some. 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 Although Just a you little. could give the best raspberries. Could you though? Yeah, or the Zerbert. Or they'd just be like kinda well, It would maybe. be it would be hard. No, here's the reason it would be hard, because if your lip is over your 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 eyes and you'd go in for that raspberry, there's nothing to make the noise. Yeah, it'd just be like a floppy lower lip. Yeah. That's kind of weird. I take that back. I don't like that anymore. That's the worst raspberries. You can give the worst raspberries. Yeah. Not the best. The worst. The, the worst. The damage, like, like, and when I say worst, I don't mean bad raspberries. I mean, the person wants to die after they receive the raspberry. <laughs> yes, they do harikari after. No, that's an honorable death. Oh. Uh, you, you can't, you can't have an honorable death after that. That's true. Um, so remember, so I, I want to bring this up, but do you remember when we, we saw, what was it? 99 Ronin? Yeah. I liked that movie. Really fun movie. Yeah. Uh, so spoiler alert for people who don't know a, it's an old Japanese myth, first of all. So it's not, not a myth. It's, I don't even think it's a myth. I think it's an actual thing that happened. Um, so in 99 Ronin, basically, uh, or 47 Ronin, 47 Ronin. That was it. Uh, it was known as the Akko incident, and it did actually happen. So 1701 to 1702, um, and the, the group was disbanded and sentenced to seppuku. So at the end of the movie, uh, everyone's all lined up, ready to, you know, kill themselves. And someone in the, the movie theater that they were in, where we were in was like, they're not going to kill themselves, are they? Oh, I remember that. Oh, and we're just like, you really never heard of this? <laughs> like, they oh, were, no. They it... were shook. This is, they were getting some new information. They were oh, learning. Oh, yeah, no. No. Uh, it was, for me, it was hilarious. That was like, that was the moment. Like, I don't remember most of the plot of 47 Ronin. Um, but I do remember that. That, exact moment yes i recall it, that it is burned into my brain and it will never leave me because like it was the it was the most culturally ignorant thing i've ever heard there was oh i was just like oh child <laughs> like you <laughs> oh they yeah, were like in the it, row of, right in front of us too i think in a little yeah, bit, yeah yeah a little bit to one side or the other i forget uh, yeah, it was it was a while back. Oh hey, uh, it flopped in the box office. Oh yeah, it did terrible in the box office. I still yeah. like the movie. There were Kenku. Yeah, no, I liked it. I mean, I love Keanu Reeves in general. Oh, speaking of which, have you seen that there's a new Keanu Reeves movie coming out? The new Bill and Ted. Yeah. Yeah. He looks. Keanu Reeves doesn't suit uh, young people's clothes anymore. He, he that has is a, true, but that also he, might be a little bit due to like his film career after Bill and Ted and being like cool action guy. Yeah, well, because his face looks it, it, like in the in the uh, Ted outfit because he was Ted, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So in the Ted outfit, his face just looks off. I don't yeah. know why. It's just because, I guess maybe because I, I associate him with John Wick, and he's such a badass in John Wick. Oh, yeah. That it's like him wearing non-badass clothes is just weird. Yeah. Me and Erica were talking about John Wick yesterday, just like going over how it's the best opening part of any movie ever. Like, the, uh, um, not the dog death part, but the 
like, son like, going the to the father and the father saying how bad that mm. this guy fucked up and the camera just keeps cutting back like after saying like how like he's telling his son how bad he fucked up and then it just cuts to john wick in a basement with a sledgehammer just like getting ready to fuck everything up and you're just like oh like get chills like oh this is gonna be a good movie oh no that movie was phenomenal really good um i still needed to see john wick 3 though is did i see john wick 3 i think i so did. john wick 1 is him getting vengeance for the dog basically uh yeah. john wick 2 is somebody if my memory is correct a guy like oh i did. wants to make a name for himself by taking out john wick and then john wick 3 is he's burned a burned asset basically and yeah i haven't seen john wick 3 yet though yeah i saw john oh yep i remember that scene yeah i saw john wick 3 <laughs> i wanted john wick 4 I think it's happening. It better. They, listen, I don't care if they start turning bad. Like, if they just start milking on IP, I I will watch uh, just John Wick all day. Um. So, you know that the movie wasn't originally supposed to be called John Wick? No, what was it supposed to be called? Ba- um, bang, bang, I'm angry looking... dog man? Uh, it was originally supposed to be called Scorn. That makes sense. But here's the problem. Keanu oh. Reeves referred to it as John Wick when he was doing interviews. Uh, consistently. <laughs> That's pretty great. Like, so much that it was like, well, we got to call it John Wick now. Yeah. That's pretty fantastic. <laughs> yep. It's the most Keanu Reeves thing ever. It is. Um, so, Tamvalos is a slang word in the uh, Cebuano language. Um, it's used to mean a useless or inept male. Um, it is oh. a vulgar word and is not used in polite or m- manner or in formal conversation. Occasionally, people say it to elicit um, like a humorous effect. Uh, the suffix los los is uh, a slang term for the male genitalia. So, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so um, tempo los los kang daku uh, is a slang in, in Cebuano, uh, which is similar to calling someone like an, an idiot, like you're a dimwit. But, like, way harsher. Yeah, yeah. That's, I guess, like, dick for brains. Pretty much. Wow, this next image is is special. Yeah. <clears throat> so, in Bickel, uh, north of Cebu, its name is derived from its long, wrinkled penis and testicles that sag to the ground. Uh, loose, loose, literally meaning loose or hanging, or to have an erection. Um, th- Those are two very different concepts. Yeah, they they're they are like they're diametrically opposed to one another. They are. This this episode's way more sexual than the last one. I will admit. There's there's you some started this there, fight. Huh? You started this uh, th- fight. Tammy has some serious sexual energy going on. Oh yeah. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, this version... Also, I didn't start any fights. I just <laughs> talked about Tanuki because I watched an anime that I loved. So you started this fight. Um, this yeah, okay. version <laughs> is a weird, lanky creature that's all black and has thin, wobbly legs. Um, like that of Bambi uh, uh, and cloven hooves at the end. And it has large joints. Um, not the jazz cigarette kind either. Uh, that that would be a uh, that would be a scene from uh, Scary Movie two, I believe. Is that the one? You, that's where he's the got one the with really the really large joint. Well, that's the one where the uh the weed plant grows. Oh, yep, that's the one. Wraps up. Uh, what's his name? I think his the character's name was like Shorty or something. Yep, and then smokes him because yeah. he smoked so much <laughs> weed. <laughs> that he was actually he actually had a like get you high effect. Yes. Yeah. Oh, man. Scary movie movies were so good up until, like, the end of three. Yes. Which one My was favorite... the one with the Viagra? That's four. That's four. when the movie... That's when it went bad. Gotcha. Um, I think three was funny, if only because there's the scene where they're cocking the shotguns. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, like, bullets actually come out of... <laughs> not, no, not the shotguns. They cock the shovels, and bullets fly out of the shovels. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's really funny. Um, 
it was also the first scary movie movie I saw. Yeah. So it might not actually be good. I don't even remember. I haven't watched I know. it. No, I saw years. there's a sequel of Train to Busan. Yes, there it's coming. It's yeah. I don't think it's out yet. Not yet. Um there's a pre there's a there's a not a sequel, but it's happening at the same time. There's an animated version that takes place in the same universe. It's really good. Okay. Um it's like Last Station or something like that. Yeah. Um that one's out right now and you can watch it I think on VRV. VRV or Netflix cuz I think I saw something on Netflix um about it. Yeah, the sequel to Train Bu- to Busan I think is like they then go south. Like yeah, Peninsula. It was released in South Korea um 10 days ago. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, it also has Good. a large mouth. Good movie, by the way. I blame the yeah. girl for everything. Well, the whole that's... movie would have never happened if she could have, would have just been fine having her birthday at home. Like she caused the movie. I'm not saying she caused the the the, the outbreak. I'm saying that she would have been had a very happy birthday if she could have just stayed home. I just want to say that you have a you have a history of victim blaming when it comes to the villains of movies. That's my favorite thing to do is like find you, you, a you way to a... blame the victims in horror movies. Yeah. <laughs> Although in some horror movies they really are to blame. Like I mean yeah. uh what you call it Friday the 13th. <laughs> like I I I liked like if something horrible's happened and it's clearly not someone's fault in a movie I try to find a way to make it someone's fault. I mean, it literally is the protagonist's fault in um, whatchamacallit, uh, Cabin in the Woods. Oh yeah, another like, great totally movie. their fault, totally their fault. Very good. Um, and it's the victim's fault in Tucker and Die. Tucker, Tucker and Dale, Tucker, yeah. Tucker and Dale versus <laughs> Evil. Yeah, which I watched recently with Lissa. Yeah, and she was like, "Okay, that was a funny movie." <laughs> right? You can't go wrong. I watched it again the other night with uh, uh, Erica, and that was great. Oh, and she was like, "Oh, I, I get it now." Yeah, no, no. It it's one of those movies that people like are a little skeptical of at first because it looks like it's just a standard like nonsense slasher film. Yeah, like, well, garbage. that's how I had to trick her into watching it, right? Because I've described it before, and she was like, uh, I don't know if I'm feeling it, but she was just like, what's on Netflix? And I was just like, oh, this, I heard this movie's pretty good. And then just started it and didn't say it was the other movie that I described, and she was like, I don't think I'll like that. <laughs> so I tricked her into watching Tucker and Dale. No, I, I am going to say this right now. I don't think it's possible to dislike Tucker and Dale. It's not. It's not possible. It's, like, really not. It's... It's such like it. It's held up like so well. Oh yeah. Because like when when was the when did we when did it come out? It was like 2011 or something like that. It, it's it's one of those movies that I've watched again and it held up. Yeah, it aged very well. 2010 is when it came out. Yeah, and it still it, looks good for a movie that's a decade old. Oh yeah, well because everything's practical. Yeah, like literally everything is practical in that movie. Oh yeah. Um. But it's good practical. It's not bad practical. Because cause they, like, <laughs> the like... kid throwing himself in the wood chipper is one of my favorite bits. <laughs> this... He's just like, <laughs> I like the scene. He goes These in... dang college kids. They keep killing themselves all over my property. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're like, they took his bowling fingers. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite part at the is at the end of the movie. Um, this is a spoiler for Tucker and Dale versus e- Evil, by the way. When he's like, "Did my finger always look like that?" Oh, and it's a lady's finger <laughs> with nail polish. Yep. Yeah. Oh, with like a manicure. Yes. Oh, oh, such a funny movie. Such like like uh, what's his name? Great. Tyler Labine. I love him. He Alan was funny. Tudyk, Alan Tudyk was him. great when he's cutting the the into the tree stump and then starts getting stung by bees. So he's just running through the woods with a chainsaw. Oh, it's if you love horror movies, it is such a love letter to horror movies. Oh yes, like it's a total love. Like it's like, oh, this is a to every part of this is totally ridiculous. Like. There's no reason anyone would do any of these things. And it's beautiful. <laughs> it's so good. Oh. So good. Um, it also has a large mouth. 
Uh, the arms are long and thin. See, there's no way to transition. I just have to dive back in. Just hard. Oh no, shift. no, 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 no. When we when we get off topic, Brandon, you just have to go back. Oh yeah. Uh, no, yeah. Uh, it is said to have a mane from its head uh, down its back to its booty, um, which I say, punk. That's pretty punk as hell. Um, I mean, it's punk or glam rock. Was glam rock big onto like mohawks? No, I'm saying that like it has a mane. Oh, I interpreted mane like a horse's mane. I was thinking mane like um like a lion's mane. Gotcha, like some steel panther stuff going on. Yeah, because that's that's hair band shit. There. Yeah. So it could either be super punk or super hair band. Yeah. Which are I think diametrically opposed. V- very much so. <laughs> very much so. Um. Uh, this one likes to hide under trees at night and it chases people through the woods. Um, to escape the uh, fiend. Do they have to go into the woods, though? Once the, yeah, you have to go into the, so just don't go in the woods, is that what you're saying? Well, no, no, I was, I was making a joke about that, like, musical movie. Oh, uh, Into the Woods, I saw that. Yeah, we saw it together. Yeah. <laughs> it was you, me, Lissa, and your sister, if my memory is correct. I, I think your sister was there. Sounds right, like, she's, my sister's the one where, like, was she, or was, because I know we've gone to movies. But it's hard, it's a harder one to like pinpoint specifically which ones. I think she explicitly wanted to see that movie, so she came along. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Um. So to escape this fiend, rather than wearing your clothing inside out, you must wear them upside down. Okay. You're gonna have to walk me through this one. So the way I interpreted that is that you remove your shirt and pants, and you put your legs through the armholes of your shirt. And then put your arms through your pant legs and, and kind of like then, go through the forest like this because he'll be laughing so hard his lip covers his eyes. And you just go, Oh, he'd love that. That's even better. Uh, Maybe he's not trying to kill people. He just wants to laugh. He just needs friends. He's like, he's under, he just looks terrifying and he jumps out and he's like, I need friends. And you're just like, oh God. And start taking your clothes off and run away. And he's like, I don't understand why people are so weird. At a certain point, I just stopped giving up. Yeah. Um, and Bicol, uh, Bizaya and Mindanao. Um, these are all different regions within the Philippines. Um, mm-hmm. There is a version of this creature that takes women into secluded areas, and apparently the only method of escape is to flash the creature. Uh, At which point it will become so erect that its penis blocks his own vision, allowing the victim to escape. Yeah, I've got that problem sometimes. Uh, Yeah, yeah, you too? Yeah, yeah. Well, usually it's because my vision goes black. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Why is the trash man there? Um, I just felt like I needed to put a naked picture of Danny DeVito somewhere in is here. Is that... I believe that's after he crawls out of the couch. Yes, all sweaty. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I needed to be clean. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the Alve Public Information Office, uh, in its report about the parade, stood by the port- portrayal of the effigy... Uh, saying it described the Tambalislus as an awkward, lanky, wrinkled black creature um, that has long, thin, wobbly legs, hooves, and big joints, and was punished by um, Gongrong, um, which is a supreme deity, by enlarging its phallus to, to gargantuan uh, pro- proportions of its promiscuity. So it's, yeah, that's I a mean, punishment. Well, yeah. Uh, Brandon, what reality do you think that wouldn't be a punishment? That would be a nightmare. To um, have a penis that is literally as large as you, the rest of your body. I mean, you could find some creative things. What? What? Brandon, you now you have a you you literally have the most one of the most sensitive organs on the male body, and it's the largest organ you have. I mean, who says I don't have that issue already? <laughs> <laughs> if oh. it's bigger than your skin, that's a problem. It can't be bigger than my skin. Exactly. <laughs> it's okay. Your skin's an organ. Yes. Um. So let's dive deeper down this Filipino penis vein. Um, yeah, I saw that joke. It is I'm not a... gonna. We're gonna just move on. Oh, from that. okay. Um, yep. 
it is. It's a good joke, but we're moving on. Yeah. So it's a popular belief among the Blondes, which is a tribe in the southern Mindan Nano region, um, that in the olden days, man could not be distinguished from woman, um, and that there was no such word as man or woman. In fact, the genital organs of the male and female were all lo uh, located in, it, in each individual. The penis was located on one knee and the vagina on the other. Um, and the uh, Tasso Wei was the maker of this, the, the, the architect of, of this. Um, I was about to say, I was about to say that this is more progressive than I was expecting. And then you mentioned the knees. <laughs> uh, Fu Wei noticed that um, the individual was unable to work anymore. The individual was busy in sex act most of the time. Because of this, uh, Fu Wei uh, told Tasso Wei uh, Wait. that the individual should either have male or female organ only. Be Right, because it was located on their knees, they were just knocking their knees together, so they were, were they were to the point where they were unable to function. So therefore, they had to change the design, and say, "Listen, one or the other." Knowing humans, though, that would definitely happen. That's why I included this part because I was like, "Oh, I, I see that of the creation That's, myths, I like this one." That 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 makes total sense, though. Like. That would be something that a human being would do. Yeah. And, and um, to the, when he was approached with this design change, um, Tasu uh, Wei refused to change the placement and said, if you want to make one with a penis and one with a vagina, go ahead, but I'm not changing mine. Sounds like Tasu Wei is like a uh, middle management type. Yeah. So Fu Wei created an individual uh, with a penis only and another with a vagina only. And he saw that it was good since that uh, that time the person with the penis would be called a man and the one with the vagina could be called a woman. And they could function. <laughs> yeah. I feel like this this might have some negative con connotations like culturally for intersex people though. True. Yeah, just from a, pr a perspective of it's like it explicitly equates it with wrongness yeah well at the time when this would have like originally come about uh one also i think that that also uh exists in all creation myths <laughs> yes um yeah so like at the time not not that it that wasn't probably wasn't recognized as a thing whenever this originally came about. And I think well, that's probably know, also well, true with all of I the other... I know that, Brandon. <laughs> yeah. I know that it wasn't recognized as a thing. I'm just saying that sometimes when a culture has something ingrained in its creation myth where it explicitly calls something out as being wrong, it has an impact on people. That's true. <laughs> um, I'm just explicitly pointing that yeah. It might be slightly problematic. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, so, Kulakog is a legendary giant from Bickle who, oh. who is said to use his penis in a very unique manner during the Morano raid, saying that the Moros trembled when they heard his voice and escaping quickly, they left behind all of their captives. Uh, Kulakog saw where they were from afar and stretching his phallic organ, um, he told his mother to use it as a bridge uh, to come where he was, and his mother crossed over the Bickle River, and all the captives followed her. So he, he used it to create a bridge and save people. He used his penis for good. He used he used his penis for good, which honestly, why can't probably we all? the first probably the first time in recorded history that a penis was used for good. Probably that you know what? Any time I I will say, in my opinion, it is more likely than not if you're reading about a penis. Uh, something bad is happening. Something with it. is something bad is happening. <laughs> yes, almost every time a penis is mentioned in history, something bad's about to happen, either to the penis or to things around the penis. Yes, <laughs> it's very true. There's never a there's never a story in which the penis was used to save lives, except for this case. That is true. This is a rarity. Yes. <laughs> to go with the uh, what is it the. Um, the the Team America World Police dicks fuck people, dicks, but dicks fuck, fuck assholes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh, so Mantu are uh, giant spirits in the, uh, I'm going to call it. Uh, uh, Lilio? Lilio? Yeah. Lilio? Yeah, I don't know. Yodio? See, I don't know what the double L is at the front. Yeah, that's that's a hard one because I don't know what that indicates yeah, like in the, the Filipino. Olio -lo. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, uh, over 30 feet tall. They're usually seen roaming the fields or leaning against coconut or buried tree alone while whistling melodiously. Uh, people who have allegedly seen uh, a manatee describe it as having a fair complexion, wide shoulders... A tall, uh, aquiline nose. Also, the male Manitou has an incredibly long penis that is very large and a dangling scrotum. Although peaceful, they're easily offended when uh, a human whistles along with it and will grab the nuisance human and carry them to the tallest coconut tree and leave them on top with no means of climbing down. I'm not responding to that. I'm responding to the next image. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's fair. Um, um, but the image doesn't really have anything to do with the rest of the stuff. It's just I is... saw it. I was like, oh, that's a unique way to use a penis as a weapon. You could throw it. Why does... Why, like, I'm trying to understand... Like, usually I can understand why a... Like, like, in the case of Tanuki, I understand why the Tanuki had large scrotum. Okay. I'm really struggling to understand why the, why Tammy here has such a big penis. Um, like, 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 I can, I can usually, I can usually take these exaggerated attributes and say, oh, this represents X, Y, or Z or something. But, like, I'm just literally, culturally, I can't reconcile it. Gotcha. Um, so which might just be in, the fact that I'm not Filipino. Fili Filipino folklore, there is a significant portion that is, is centered around genitals. Whether okay, whether they're they're prominent on the creature like this, because there's trust me a lot of other ones with <laughs> that have interesting genitals, um, or the creature affects like um, the Mananengal and. Um, and and some of the Oswang will like consume. They'll steal and eat generals. So so a lot of them are general focused, and a lot of them are also baby focused. Where either the creature is a okay. baby or the creature eats babies. So they're like related to fertility and your ability to. Basically, they're they're also related to erectile dysfunction. Is what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they're they're so so basically their fertil their explanations for. Lack of fertility or fati fertility, respectively, depending on the depending on specific what yep. situation. Okay, yep. I now that that makes more sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Um, there are also phallic uh rituals in places like Laguna, uh, Cagayan, and Alangos, and in Cebu, where women wear phalluses of exaggerated sizes while men put on women's dresses, and a ritual intended to confuse the storms. Uh, I've seen those. I've seen those particular videos online. Yes, I know they exist. Uh, in this ritual, uh, it's held during the lowest high tide of the year. Uh, land animals are brought to the sea, and fishermen put plant seeds on the beach to deceive the weather, um, in the hopes of storms uh, uh, that, that they'll get confused by these the changing of roles between male and female, mm -hmm. putting things that are usually on the land in the water, and things usually want in the water in the land. Um, I can actually that that I can see. Uh, I can see that ritual organically emerging yep that, that organically emerges and again the yeah. all the way back to the first uh couple paragraphs the parade in which these statues are prominently like displayed is specifically uh, related to harvest mm. no that, that so it kind of is related to so it does relate to fertility then yeah and it also because like fertility of the land even as yeah, far as like because well, you're talking because you're talking like like it's a literal using an object of fertility to represent fertile land and harvest and all that. Yeah. Okay. It, no, that that makes that makes sense. Yep. And see, listen, there there might be nine pictures of dicks on this, but we can still learn. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yep. We can still learn. In Tene Rizal, uh. Old women wipe their skirts on a huge stone phallus as a part of the fertility rite. And neighboring Morong, 
uh, though uh, it is the men who wear the women's clothes and pretend to be pregnant while being a part of the wedding party. Hmm. In uh, Kalyan Laguna, the uh, there's a dance uh, with the bridal party, including the brass band, uh, through the streets of the town. Which also, I wish, like when there were bridal parties and stuff, that there were just brass bands and people walking down the streets. Honestly, Brandon, I just want more brass bands. I mean, that's fair. I because I, I just want to skank more. See, we think different. You were th- you went to ska, and I went straight to like too many zoos where it's like house music, but with just like brass bands. See, I'm just thinking. I'm thinking. I need that. I need that horn section. Yeah, you, we need them. Them. Do you own any checkered clothing? I don't think so. Um, I own real big fish shirts that have checkers on them. Okay, I'll buy it. I'll take it. Um, I don't own. I don't own checkered clothing because um. I personally don't like the way checkers look on myself. Fair. So I don't, I don't, it's not a part of my aesthetic. Gotcha. What is a part of my aesthetic is whatever someone gives me uh, for either a <laughs> birthday or Christmas present. And I just wear it because I hate buying clothes. So are you telling me for every birthday and Christmas, you have received a pair of cargo pants or shorts rather cargo shorts. I haven't worn car- cargo shorts since high school, Brandon. Yeah. All my cargo shorts are blown out. That's I still can't picture you without cargo shorts. It's over. I, none of them fit me anymore. That's fine. Now I have now I have like docker shorts. That's fine. Like boat shorts. You can wear any any garment you'd like on your lower half. I just want you to know that I will always hallucinate cargo shorts onto your body. All right, I'm going to say this. I love cargo shorts. Okay. There's utility to a cargo short. They're There's useful. utility to They're a good useful. Car- like okay. pockets. The fact that I can button a pocket and not have to worry about a phone or something important falling out of it is a really big deal. Okay? Exactly. And then to people who say, what are you going to use those uh, outside of just phones and stuff? You can put your wallet on the side part and to sit down in a chair without a wallet like in your on your in, in your back pocket is so much more comfortable. Oh, I don't use my back pocket for my wallet. And you can keep it on your person. Yeah, you keep it in your front pocket. I'm a front pocket boy. Yeah, I don't. I, I can't do that. The The reason I'm a front pocket boy is because my first wallet ever was a Harry Potter wallet that had a chain on it that wasn't long enough to go around the back. Oh, um, okay. And that it was a, it had Fluffy, the, the Cerberus. Yeah. On it. Um, So I'm a front pocket. Also, uh, I think think my dad carries his wallet in the front pocket so it's one of those like i learned it from him it's it's in your blood yeah and i had a I, phase I don't know. where i liked wallets with chains but very very long chains to the extent where i um bought a wallet just to remove the chain so i could have two chains on one wallet because I, I wanted the chain to go be able to like go down to my ankle and then go all the way back up and go into my back pocket and, like, really give someone a running start if they try to take my wallet before they realize that it was attached to me. Man, the aughts were a weird time. They were a very weird time. Very weird. I had Jenkos with uh, cool patterns on them. Fucking Jenkos, man. I never had them. I was always a Wrangler boy. But ah. that, once again, I want to point out, I didn't care about purchasing my clothes. So yeah. it was whatever was given to me. Um, okay, so, um, back to the brass band in the streets. Uh, they're all making lewd movements and comments, which also, I want that to happen. Um, Skanking. While the Sarah- Dude, just go to a, just go to a fucking ska show. That's true. I mean, I did- I mean, not right now, but when, when the world is not in an apocalyptic state, just go to a ska show. Yeah. Oh, here's the other crazy thing, um, about- I don't remember if I was on or off here, but about how I told you how everything is crazy outside now because it's packed and nobody's wearing masks. Um, yes, I just saw it? groups of people going into BSP to watch live music. What? Yeah, BSP was ha- like they had live music <laughs> and like just what? people on the bounce. Like I don't think they had alcohol service because of reasons, so there was no bouncer outside. It was but... just groups of people with no masks walking direct into PSP to watch a live band play. And I was like, oh. That's, that's such a bad idea. 
Yeah. That is such a bad idea, especially considering how hot BSP gets. Oh, yeah. Like, depending on... Uh, well, uh, all right. Like, it was crazy. Like, I guess, again, there's I, I guess no... you wouldn't know. Is Was it the theater zone or was it the... Uh... Uh, the front bar like type area. They were entering in through the front bar area. So if they're moving, okay. So I'm assuming back... it's a, the front bar. Yeah. yeah, they're probably not going back to the theater area. Yeah. Okay. But uh, they were all like no masks. And then again, this is like just hor- groups of people going with no masks walking past because there's outdoor dining, but the tables aren't spaced apart, so everyone's still eating close. But they're also along the sidewalk, so it's just groups of people with no masks walking past groups of people eating with no masks. I was like, ah. Oh. Uh, I gotta get out of here. I I literally don't leave my home anymore, so you know. Just I just leave for food, food, food and alcohol. That's it. I literally just go food shopping. That's it. Yeah. Or if I have to, or I pick up food from a, like, do takeout because I live in an area where I can't get delivery because the bridge. Oh. Oh yeah, that makes sense. I'm close enough for them to do delivery, but the bridge they don't like like most places don't like to pay the toll. Yeah, that makes sense. Like you'd have to know a spot somewhere along the main road where you live that yeah. that you'd want delivery. And there's, there's literally one, and yeah. that's a pizza joint. Oh, uh, that 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 sucks. I mean, it's good pizza at least. That's fair. I and can I eat love pizza, pizza all the time. I like pizza too. I can't have it all the time. I could eat it all the time, and I do. <laughs> I could live off of pizza. Not well, but I could. <laughs> well, you'd be very jaundiced. <laughs> well, that's what the uh that's what the um the, the, the tang is for. I saw Tang grocery shopping before and I almost reached for it, but I didn't because I I I don't really eat I don't eat sugar and I don't really eat bread. Like I rarely eat bread. <laughs> So I was like, I don't want this. I was, I, I was afraid that I'd be like, I'd have a, like a, a relapse. And next thing you know, I'd be drinking soda. In, or like get a lollipop or something. I was like, I can't, gonna, I can't, I can't get this tang because I don't want to say something. Yeah. I don't, I don't really like tang. That oh. I think it's worse than Kool-Aid. Why? They're both delicious. I think it's worse than Kool-Aid. Oh, John. Inflator of inflator eight, of course, is the worst. So because of all the arse, because your, of all the poisoning. What's your preferred instant drink mix? Instant drink mix? Yeah. So we're talking. Are we talking like? So in the vein of like Kool Aids, Tangs, Ovaltines. Uh, Hershey syrup. Oh, see, you subverted that. I was thinking powder. No, because I yeah. If say... we're talking non-powder, I'm going to say Hershey syrup. If we're talking powder, Nesquik. Gotcha. Okay, because I, I do. I'll, I'll admit, I like. Oh, I got to be in an Ovaltine mood, but because it's different, it tastes different than just normal yeah, chocolate milk. It does. It does. Also, I haven't had milk. I don't remember the last time I had milk. I have milk daily. See, I can't. It can't I'm a cereal boy. I'm. 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 I don't do the lactose good. Well, yeah. So, like, I, I haven't had milk, and I have had a milkshake. Where like if I've I've like it's been a weekend, I I looked over and apologized, and said sorry, but I'm gonna get a milkshake, so we just have to live in this for the, the next in this hell for a while. But I want a milkshake and gotten a milkshake. But I haven't had just like just a glass of milk. I I'm gonna I don't really like just a glass of milk because it's got like a weird aftertaste to me. Yeah. Um, but I do like, I like a glass of milk with a little bit of dark chocolate. Ooh, that sounds nice. Like melted That's in really it? really good. Or just like no, on the side? the, the syrup. Um, the, oh. The Hershey's, Hershey's syrup. dark yeah. chocolate syrup. Um, I know people say that Hershey's is crap candy, but I'm a, I'm, I'm trash person. So. Yeah. Deal with it. See, you, you know what Erica likes that I, I, um, am strongly against and refuse to be in the same room, uh, while this food drink combination happens um spaghetti and a uh, tall glass of milk just red spaghetti red sauce and milk Ooh, the red sauce that that yeah. that throws it off like just pure spaghetti i might be more okay with not, but not the spaghetti red alone it's it's a... got that ragu on it oh just... the red sauce throws that that throws the whole chemistry out of the out the window for me yeah that's i was like oh i i'm not gonna stop you but i can't i can't be a witness 
I can't support this. Yeah. I need deniability. Yeah, just like ah, uh, I don't, I can't, I don't want, I need, I need, I need deniability. That's right. Yeah, yeah. You're like a doctor at a duel. Yeah. Um, the Balu Balu Festival, um, which is a Filipino word for mad or crazy, was originally meant to confuse the weather, uh, but now it symbolizes the confusion of the faithful. Um, who choose to illustrate their struggles in life through rituals learned through their pagan ancestors. Um, people are showing the things that we need. Uh, whatever. This is. Uh, I don't. Know. I don't. Know. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. That's just me explaining. Like, oh, also, like, there's all their festivals and stuff. That's kind of it. <laughs> Fair. Um, I didn't realize we were that close to the end of the episode. Otherwise, I would not have kept bringing random shit up. Oh no! You can feel free to bring our stuff up. That's this is like, hey, here's a, a monster with a ding dong, and also John Wick, like this. <laughs> I mean, it really is. It's really I mean, what really, these are. Like, really, this is just a monster with a ding dong. We like we think monsters are cool, but also have short attention spans. So that's that's this. That's a fact. Um, one last thing before we close. Yes. Uh, maybe two. I don't know. We'll see. If you're not interested in hearing us talk anymore, the monster's done. The, yeah, no more monster. Just, just to let you know, like, like I'm gonna give you guys an out. If if you're listening to this podcast and you want an out, right here's the out point. Just be sure to check the show notes for all the details. Um, but if you want to know John's social security number, stay tuned. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know it off the top of my head. Oh. I only know the last. Th- I only know the last four digits because that's the only thing that anyone ever asks. Ooh, I've got it memorized, baby. I have it mostly memorized. It's just I always mix up two of the numbers, and that's never a good thing. No. Um. So one, I've been playing VR chat. Oh, okay. How's that going? Fun. Ooh. It's actually really fun. Okay. Uh, it's kind of insane. Um, and I bought a. Listen, I both bought VR headsets. Ah, uh, okay. So we are going to because I already had the PSVR, but it doesn't yeah. work on the PC. Oh. So we both got Oculus Quests. With the little cable that connects it to the PC. Oh, okay. Um, of course, we have to wait until like August third for that to happen. But, uh, yeah, she's been playing a ton of it. Like, she's already got like fourteen hours logged in it. Damn. Yeah. Um. Second, I have finally seen the Hamilton musical. Ah. Which we mentioned in the we mentioned that in the the Discord. Yes. But I have finally seen the hamilton musical and i'm obsessed with it a little bit it's good right it's really good i was I really big when it, it came out listening to it and then they did the hamilton mixtapes and uh mm-hmm. i was hoping to get to see and i did it it was good i liked it it was great it was pretty good which it reminded good. me that um i love our discord sometimes because the, like one day was uh hamilton and then the next day um people were just oh, discussing were like- the, the legality of eating horse flesh yeah. I I came I I came into that conversation late. Yeah. Like super late and I was just like what is happening here? There's um also how do we get to the Discord? I forget. Do we have a link on the website? We have a link in the show notes, I think. Oh, uh, okay. Um let me just check it real quick. There was something like we were, we were in it and the other day I just had the thought like I don't I don't think I know how to get into it. Um, yeah, you have to, you have to like, so we have a website that, um, so on our, uh, on the, the show notes. So if you look at this on Pied Bean, it's probably the easiest way to see it. Um, we have a discord link, um, and it's discord.me slash cryptopedia cast. Ah, nice. Um, and it's a. It's we set it up two months ago, I guess, um, and it should work. We had someone test it out, so you know, whatever. Oh, well, it works because people um, are in it and they and they and they do the chit well, ch- the chat chats. Well, most of those people I hand invited. Oh, I gotcha. Um, I I invited so like, uh, the first couple people, the first two people I hand invited, then I got the the patreon thing working so it will automatically invite people oh okay and cool. then i made the invite 
link that will invite people who are not patrons. Gotcha. Uh, but they don't get patron level access and stuff like that. Okay. So, um, I guess I'll just do the show notes now. Uh, our website is cryptopediacast.com. Our Instagram is at cryptopediacast. Our Twitter is at cryptopediacast. If you want to email us, it's cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com. Uh, we have a Patreon, and every time we do one of these episodes, we thank our jackalopes, and it's my turn because I think you did last week, last time. So our current jackalopes are Clay Sinclair, Marty Von Party, Bird Schneider, and in his second episode, Jonathan Shepard. So thanks, guys. Uh, you allow me to pay the bills for the website <laughs> and the hosting. <laughs> so thanks. Uh, we have a Facebook group that someone posted something to recently. Yeah. So thanks for posting that, I guess. Uh, it was like a the demon of New York or the devil in New York. Pretty yeah, cool I saw post. that. Um, pretty, pretty interesting. I don't really push the Facebook group as much, mainly because we have the Discord now. Uh, but it's there. Um, if you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, all that good yeah, stuff. Yeah, it, it was the devil's skeleton. Yeah, it yeah. was actually kind of interesting. Um, might, maybe it'll make it into like a, like a, when we have time, uh, one of those mini narration episodes that we do sometimes to fill when we miss an episode. Oh, yeah. Because we do that sometimes. Mm-hmm. We've, we've, I, we've done it a number of times that I can count on one hand. Yeah. <laughs> Um, if you have any monster requests or stories, be sure to send those in. Uh, I got a few monsters in the wings that need to be done and a few cryptids that need to be done. Um, I do also have some ghost stories I want to tell at some point and paranormal events, but that'll be in the future. Uh, none of them are on the docket right now. Aha. Let's see. My Instagram is instagram.com slash donkey underscore hands my website is boyerb.com my email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com and my twitter is at crypto brandon my instagram is at u2057 my twitter is at jf dunham it's pretty angry in there just as a warning <laughs> uh my website is john and my email is john at cryptopediacast.com our art was done by tom hill you could find him on instagram at thomas michael hill his website is greatergloryco.com and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com as always i'm john i'm brandon and things are way past the point of weird i mean there was a giant penis in this episode several times several times we mentioned it for most of the episode actually so yeah things are gonna get weird (laughs) 